coming in Q5, sounding loud and proud. Time here, well, we're on the same time frame, 7.45 p.m. Temperature here is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Name here is Ivan, India Victor Alpha November. I'm located in New York City, 4.2 miles away from Manhattan. You sound good. Go ahead. Okay, Ivan. Well, <laughs> it's been a long time since I talked to you. I hope you worked a whole bunch of countries uh, in between here. Uh, I know uh, uh, you like uh, this talk group, and uh, uh, you make some good contacts there. I know that. And uh, one of the things I was going to ask you, uh, did they actually have to shut down the subways or anything? Uh how did they do that in uh, New York there, knowing that I know you work uh, for the, you know, the uh, uh, the system there? Uh, everything okay uh, there? Uh, uh, how did they uh, do that uh, on a subway there? N2 uh, XRVWA9AAA, Marco Island, Florida. Over. WA9AAA into XRV on return. Yeah, fine business. This was our first time in transit history that they actually shut the system down at night. They shut it down from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. You know, there was a situation with the homeless situation here. You know, he was talking about five and six homeless in each car, and it put the public and the workers at risk. So in order to, you know, try to solve that situation, they decided to close the system down at night to do maintenance. As you know, in other countries and other states, they close down their systems at night in order for them to do proper maintenance. So here in New York, they've been doing the same thing for the past, I would say, month or two. And it's really been working out. You know, it's been uh, easier to maintain the system. The system's looking a lot cleaner, cleaner. And uh, hopefully uh, they won't do it permanently. But uh, from what I'm seeing, they may want to do it permanently because they've been wanting to do this for a long time. So this COVID-19 just gave them an advantage to be able to do it there. Over. Well, that sounds really good. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, that's a good thing to hear that they're... Hey, you get them a chance to uh, wipe out some of the graffiti and stuff that's in there from all these taggers and everything, you know. And the sanitation, too. Uh, so, uh, you know, they uh, probably sanitize everything in there. Now they got a robot they can put in hospitals that... Uh, just hums around and spreads ultraviolet lay, uh, rays, you know, all through the uh, rooms and the hospitals and everything. And uh, that's a helpful thing that uh, they come up with there. Uh, I don't know if you heard about that, but uh, a lot of hospitals are using them now. Uh, so that ought to contain a lot of the uh, virus spreading also. Uh, back to you, Ivan. Be on return. It's funny you say that there, uh, Doug. Uh, I seen that just the other day on the news. How that technology, like you said, with the ultraviolet light, how it kills the germs and stuff like that. In fact, they were starting to use it on some of our trains here uh, as a test. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully, it'll work out. For us. You know, all of us just have to take precaution and be safe. You know, you have people still running around here in New York with no mask on and not using protection as if they don't have no clue. Even though we see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, we still not out of the woods yet there, Doug. So we still have to take precaution. But we ain't going to tie it up too long there. We do appreciate the contact and the cue so and just hope you and your family take care and be safe, and we look forward to our next one. 
Whiskey Alpha Non, Alpha Alpha Alpha, number two, X-Ray Radio Victor, Brooklyn, New York City, saying 73 around Marco Island, Florida, and have a super fine day. Thank you, Doug.